So this video is to talk about how to run two separate outputs uh, while still reusing the four cable method with HXFX unit. Now there's already a video of how to send separate outputs with the regular Helix unit, but with the HXFX there's a bit of a problem since you're not able to select your output as easily as with a full size unit. Now over here I have the four cable method already set up. I have my send, I have my return. And I have my oh, sorry, I have my send, uh, my input, my send, and my return. They go into this big, thick black cable, which goes into my Marshall amplifier, which is currently on. And then the orange cable just goes straight to the guitar. This is the HX edit unit. I have my uh, regular dynamic and distortions ahead of uh, ahead of the amp. Then I have the FX loop block here. Then I have the the time based effects here. I have the reverb, I have the delay, volume pedal to keep the low volume down, and here's where the split happens. Now, here is my IR that I was planning to use. The IR contains, you know, just a bunch of cabinet impulses. And the goal is essentially to send it to do two different things. Now, here's what my amp sounds like. Very quiet. Now, the second I try to separate this from here to here, it starts to hiss, right? Now this is very infuriating because, you know, there's no way to select any other outputs from the heat. So what we end up doing is uh, throwing the whole, having to get a bigger one. Or what I figured out here is if you go to the mixer with the send one and send two, you have to pan the send directly to the right side. For some reason, it works on the right side. If you do it purely on the left side, let's go back to the amp again. it still generates a lot of noise. And my guess is that it treats the first send that is being occupied by the effects loop as send one or send left, while treating the second send as a, um, as a different output. Now, if you put it to the right, let's go back to the 100%, let's go back to the volume knob. You hear the volume. But no, um, no whiny feedback noise. So essentially, all we did is route, route it to the second, second channel. So just to go back here again, you see we just take the, the send one and two, and we just pan it 100% right. And if you need to set the level higher, you set the level higher. So all I have on this channel is just my R, IR. Everything else is going the same way, and then you're hitting your IR. Um, there are recommendations. To do it like this where you drag everything here to the effects loop and you duplicate the reverb you duplicate the uh, uh, the delay block and all that good stuff if you have enough space that is um, I might have to actually move some stuff around uh, delay can I copy the delay block yeah I guess I can uh, hmm. dynamic what is this, this is the auto swell so I kind of need all this so um, well yeah I might have to move the volume now but anyways point is you move the blocks around and you duplicate them if you for some reason don't have any more space on the second path yeah you could just run it this way it'll just create a slightly less clean sound because you'll be delaying and reverbing and then hitting your IR block over here now anyways let's go to my Reaper where I'm testing out the sound of this now you still have to have um, you still have to have the amp plugged in so you can see that there are spikes on this one. If we just click record. Let's save that block over here. Turn off our volume and let's press play. All right, let's go back to that again. Now you can see the volume, uh, the waves are very incomprehensible here because I don't have the um, I don't have the gain all the way up on my preamp or my interface rather, nor do I have the volume all the way up on my Marshall itself. Now this could be fixed by having a volume block in your Helix setup, or this could be fixed by having a um, by having a uh, volume attenuator. Now again, both ways work just fine. 
So just figure out whichever way, way it works for you. You could have either a volume pedal block that's that's uh, dampens the volume on your uh, amp while not having it for the IR. So you could have it somewhere else. Now you're noticing there's that hissing sound, and the hissing sound is coming from the track itself. Now the, the only way to uh, the way to fix this is very simple. You just simply unplug the USB port we had. There it is. You unplug the the USB. Um, uh, from the helix in order not to have this the reason why I had it plugged in is so I could show you how it looks in the HX edit and how we ha how we had to route the whole entire thing so hopefully that helps if you have any more questions about routing for the HX effects unit uh, let me know um, I do plan to get a, a, um, a torpedo captor box for better attenuation for power soaking and for some DI actions but for now, you should be able to send your second return into either an interface or into um, into front of the house. Now, uh, I'm not sure if front of the house is going to require you to have it run through a DI box first. But I'm sure if you take a speaker cable, a balanced speaker cable, and plug in to send one while plugging up the return, I think you still should plug it in just in case, you will be able to pass on that IR sound along with your amp sound. Uh, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. If anything, leave me a comment. I'll try to answer what I can.